Welcome back, Astro listeners, to Star Lady Soul Reader Network. This is Media Monk, and as usual, I have our shining star of the Zodiac on the line, freshly back from the uh, NORWAC conference in Seattle, Washington. It's Star Lady. Hi, Star Lady. Hello, Media Monk. And we all know Star Lady is Kim Marie, the managing director for the Evolutionary Astrology Network. EAN, as we've come to call it, does provide the finest EA course to certify new astrologers. And uh, we also attract a lot of people just looking at those materials for their next level of soul growth. Oh, uh, gosh, it's going on 40 years now for Star Lady. So uh, you're welcome to call us anytime to schedule your personal consultation at one six zero five three four eight five one one one. Go to our website at www.evolutionaryastrology.net. And on a uh, current event um, announcement, the two lectures that um, uh, Star Lady did do out there at the conference, one is about the great ingress decade coming up with, um, you know, Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus all changing signs. Um, also, there is an EA chart example that you'll find very interesting. So both of those will be posted on our website uh, you know, for purchase. They're a 75-minute webinar, lots of data, lots of information there in only Star Lady's unique way of teaching the evolutionary astro- astrology paradigm. So go get those on the website. Uh, be looking for some announcements in our upcoming newsletters as well next week. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, honey. All right. Thank you, Media Monk. Hello, everyone. Um, months since our last podcast as uh, getting ready for Norwalk and producing two lectures that had to be done ahead of time. Oof. Just wiped everything off my plate other than just an intense focus. But, hey... Here we are back with our new moon, full moon podcast. What was interesting, Memorial Day weekend when I was in Seattle, some of you may know, we had Mars going into Leo, making its opposition to Pluto and squaring the nodes of the moon. I thought, oh, well, that is really a prime example of evolutionary astrology. Mars conscious desires, they come from the unconscious soul desire nature, Pluto. And that south node running about three degrees, Scorpio, is sitting right on my Sun, Mercury, Neptune, Stellium in Scorpio. So talk about old home week. Got to see evolutionary astrologers I hadn't seen from, you know, pre-COVID. So... Boy, it was a lot of fun connecting in with everybody. It was uh, very enjoyable. And Norwalk had a full house and lots of young, ah, lots of young people that showed up as well. That was also just heartwarming to see the younger generations and their interest in um, astrology. And so we still have Pluto at um, eight degrees. Uh, Leo opposing, I still have Mars, eight degrees Leo, I don't remember what I said, opposing Pluto retrograde at zero seven Aquarius. They're still within orb on this full moon of Sagittarius. And right on the heels is Venus finishing up in Cancer going into Leo. Venus is going to go into Leo June 5th. It's going to be there for four months we're going to have a venus retrograde in leo later this summer and so as venus goes into leo on june 5th it will oppose pluto and then venus will square the nose a few days later june 8th (sighs) a lot to unpack with this we've been talking about the fact that pluto will square the nodes for most of 2023 And so are we really getting in touch with our soul on some of the deepest levels possible? You know, the south nodes in Scorpio, which Pluto rules, where do those emotional rugs get ripped out from underneath you? How well have you been working for the last year and a half to really strive towards that north node in Taurus 
that Jupiter makes a conjunction to on June 1st at 3, 4 degrees Taurus. And so that back and forth energy of the nodal axis in Taurus Scorpio is asking us where to merge and how to merge on a healthy way, South Node Scorpio. Where to reach for the next levels of inner self-reliance. How do we take care of ourselves in every way possible? Pluto could be, you know, to dip into Aquarius, the light bulb's going off. And then Mars and now Venus going into Leo on a very personal level, we can be getting clear on what our desires and needs are on a very intimate, personal level. As we record this podcast, Our Lady and Media Monk are losing another family member. I'm the oldest of three girls. My middle sister is a Leo, sun at four degrees, Leo. Pluto is not quite up opposing it yet, but it's within the orb. And the nodal axis has just squared her sun. Mars went over it. Venus will go over it. And as we speak, her husband has been given less than 24 hours to live with lung cancer that he's been working his way through in the last year and a half. And it's sad for all of us. We've been knowing that it's been a decline and it took a sudden turn for the worse about a week ago, just as we had Mars oppose Pluto and square the nodes. And so here is my sister's son at four degrees, Leo, activated all over the place. And hmm, I think my sister's just in denial. She's just, it's just so overwhelming. She's kind of in denial. And, you know, thank goodness she has three kids and two stepchildren that are here and surrounding her and helping her walk through everything. And so, you know, it's that natural part of life that we all go through. Um, Media Monk is dealing with his mother and declining health again as well. And so here is Pluto square the nodes in literal death and rebirth. If we're non evolved, non, excuse me, if we are not involved on emotional levels, we can do that Pluto Aquarius detachment and recognize we're just releasing the form, we're just releasing the body. We are just going non-physical. Well, it's one thing to know that intellectually, Aquarius. It's another thing to live through it, South Node in Scorpio, when it is one of your family members or a close friend or your beloved pet. I'm two months now since Rocky suddenly left us. It's another thing with this Venus and Mars and Leo, and it is very personal. My sister's losing her best friend. She's losing her partner. And she's codependent, let's just say it. And so we're all, you know, wondering how she's going to manage. So... It's one thing to look at it from that Aquarian detachment, which is something we all have lessons with. It's another thing to look at at a very personal, intimate level, Leo, that we all have as well in our life in very personal ways. So I'm just giving you my little story. We all have our stories. We all have our life experiences. We all have Venus and Mars opposing Pluto scoring the nose, maybe knocking our socks off in some way, maybe not, but for many of us, there can be some trauma drama going on, you know, and we're having to really, really reach for that Jupiter conjunct the North Node self-reliance on deep, deep inner levels. That was the theme from new moon to full moon. And here we are with that theme in the full moon chart. It's still going to be operating for many of us throughout this first week of June. 
And so, deep breath, loving yourself just as much as you can, as closely as you can inwardly. Mercury is in Leo, or excuse me, Mercury is in Taurus yet, and it conjuncts Uranus June 4th at 20 and a half degrees Taurus. So we still have very, very strong Taurian themes going on through the full moon of Sagittarius. Our full moon is going to be Saturday evening, June 3rd, and the moon is 13 Sag, the sun is 13 Gemini. I looked at my sister's chart, I looked at my brother-in-law's chart, I looked at their three children that are bio blood to me and everybody's chart has something going on between 10 and 15 degrees gemini and sagittarius and i was just like all three kids are boom 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 this full moon is hitting everybody and so it's kind of like wow okay here is astrology in action this full moon of Sag is getting to self-honesty, emotional self-honesty, and then being honest with others and seeing if we can find our voices and communicate as clear as we possibly can. I have a sister who's babbling over nothing because of mm, denial, fear, everything that's running through. The other thing about this full moon in Sagittarius is it has a T-square with Saturn starting to slow down at 7 degrees Pisces. Saturn is going to go stationary retrograde on the new moon coming up. Saturn stationary retrograde June 17th at 7 degrees Pisces. Saturn is 704 Pisces. It goes retrograde at 713 Pisces. It has a four-month retrograde cycle. It retrogrades back until zero and a half Pisces. It does not go back into Aquarius. The entire retrograde cycle is in Pisces. But the first seven degrees are really getting hit. And Saturn in a T-square with Gemini and Sagittarius. You know, the mutable archetype is about our belief systems. And in EA, it's about natural law with our belief systems. And sometimes Saturn and Pisces can say, oh, reality's too much. It hurts too much. I'm going to go for the fantasy. I'm going to check out. I'm just going to pretend this isn't happening in my life. I'm just going to, you know, Gemini gloss over it. You know, Sagittarius, just la, 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 la. Well, with the Venus Mars opposition to Pluto square the nodes I just talked about, and now a full moon of Sagittarius with a T square to Saturn, it can be helpful if we're putting our feet on the ground and being in touch with reality as much as we possibly can. Pluto is retrograde and it is going to go back into Capricorn on June 10th, um, not a very um, long. And then I'm thinking, hold on a second, I didn't look this little detail up. Yep. Mm-hmm. So Pluto's going to retrograde back into Capricorn on June 10th, and it'll be there until it goes into Aquarius again, January 20th of 24. So we have uh, literally got seven more months of Pluto and Capricorn. Oh, and it's going to dip back in in 2024 as well. And Pluto going back to Capricorn is, uh, give me my security blanket, please. However we look at it, you know, be it the plutocrats and autocrats who want to have control of everything. Be it those of us who've had a little Aquarian shock or two and, you know, I just want everything to be steady, eddy, and security for me, which it's not going to be for my sister. And it's going to be quite shocking for her to be on her own. And so, pull back to 
Capricorn, give me my security. And yet, it's just not going to be there as it was before. We're going to be asked to do it differently. We'll touch back into Capricorn to see what no longer works for us. What no longer satisfies us in our world. I didn't get a chance um, uh, on a New Moon podcast to give us a Gemini mantra. So here it is. I gather information with intuitive searching. I gather information, Gemini, with intuitive searching, Sagittarius. And so even though Pluto is going to retrograde back into Capricorn and we stretch for feeling secure and stable, we are asked to gather all kinds of details and information. We're asked to think differently. We're asked to look at things differently. We're asked, especially on this full moon, to touch in with our intuition and see what is there for us to learn, what is there for us to know. Now, Mercury is going to go into Gemini June 11th through June 26th. June 11th through June 26th. Mercury's full speed ahead, and when it is, it only spends two weeks in the sign of the zodiac compared to two months in Taurus with its retrograde cycle that had just finished up. So as we move along in this month of June, and Mercury goes into Gemini, then the communications, and then the actions, and the activities, and the everything else that's going on starts to speed up, and we've got to be moving and acting with our flow. And we've got to be internalizing that sense of security. Capricorn planets put a retrograde. Taurus planet put a retrograde back into Capricorn. We've got to be internalizing that security so we can just go, go, go with the flow however we are meant to do so. Now, Venus going into Leo for four months, June 5th through... October 8th, that's going to be a lot of me energy. What about me? What do I want? What about me? What do I want? And it's not a bad thing. It is about loving ourselves. It is about honoring our needs. But how self-reliant North Node and Taurus can we be about meeting them? If we go to the distortions of Leo and the drama, trauma, you know, extremes, then we're looking for that security outside of ourselves rather than deepening it inward. And that's going to be what Venus and Re- Venus retrograde in Leo is going to be about on some of these deepest levels. How do I love myself? And we're going to get some strong tidbits when it goes into Leo, opposes Pluto, square the nodes over this next week. We may see some of the mm, trauma drama coming out. How well can we then look at that Aquarius polarity and objectify what it means, what it's all about? Saturn turning stationary retrograde in the middle of this month is throwing off old reality. And Saturn retrograde in Pisces, again, it's going to really want to just have a little bit of checkout. And Saturn retrograde is going to point to that Virgo polarity of feet on the ground. Reach for practicality. How do I be in my world? How do I work in my world? Jupiter on June 19th, right after the new moon coming up, it's going to make one, the one, hold on a second, I don't have my cheat sheets in front of me, I'm semi-unpacked, mm, I can't remember, but I want to say Jupiter is going to make three waxing sextiles to Saturn, I don't know that for sure, let's just go with the fact that there's going to be one June 19th, Venus at 7 Taurus, Saturn at 7 Pisces, freshly stationary retrograde. This is some opportunities to have our feet on the ground, 
and to step forward in very methodical, practical ways toward us with everything that is either surprising us or blowing up or the da happening that is, you know, causing us to look at things a little differently than we had before. Again, last weekend at Norwalk in Seattle, the home of evolutionary astrology via the Jeffrey Wolf Green Method, Pluto opposing Mars square the nodes was just like, wow, that's such an example of Pluto evolutionary astrology. But it doesn't mean it won't be without upsets and surprises. All right, media monk. I think I've said enough for now. I'm fracturing a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah. Comment? Well, thank you so much. Yep. Yeah. Uh, don't just want to invite everybody again to be looking for those lectures you did out there in Seattle, you know, next week on their website. Mm -hmm. I'll have one on the forecasting webinars page, which is the great ingress decade. And, um, not sure where I'll post the other one, but uh, it'll be educational webinars or forecasting webinars on EAN's website. So until we can have links. next time, we can have yeah. We can have links on them in our newsletter, right? Uh, well, yeah, the, the, when we, paid when webinars. we, I mean, when, yeah. yeah, but still won't, it, can't we have a link to take them to the page? Sure. Yeah. In the newsletter. Sure. Yep. Always. Yeah. Yep. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. If not this newsletter, it will be in the next one. So until next new moon, move with uh, joy and passion on this, um, very changeable and sometimes upsetting journey to the core of our souls. Thanks for listening, everyone.